Festival. This is our th third festival of the three Bs, which is, and Brahms is very appropriate because after Bach and Beethoven, Brahms indeed the great master this time of the 19th century who continued the great work of Bach and Beethoven, very much aware of the tradition. And Brahms is a very unique type of composer, and the reason we do this festival is because as Bach and Beethoven, he influenced whole century around him in uh, many different ways. First of all, in his time, music was considered the supreme art, uh, and uh, there was tremendous excitement about the, the music that he composed. What was so special about it, the Brahms, is a romantic composer, as you can hear, composed beautiful, romantic, emotional melodies, but he put them in a framework of a strict form, classical form, so that actually he can, for people who do not really know very much about music forms, what it really feels, it feels right. It feels that that's the way it should be. And the reason it feels the way it should be because it's so formally perfect. And so Brahm spent all his life in this conflict, himself being extremely emotional, moody uh, person, but also very warm and very loving. And, and the contradiction of his music, same thing, very romantic, uh, loving music within very strict forms. Brahms had a uh, very unusual life in that he was born in Hamburg in 1833, you know, and he lived most of the century, he died three years before the century was over. And when, uh, unlike Beethoven, unlike Bach, as a young man, he was totally unknown. He studied music, his father was a, you know, a mediocre musician, and he gave him lessons. But he basically was all on his own, just had a, had a, had a voice in his head, which told him, I want to write music. And he wrote on his own. At the age of 20, he showed up at the steps of Robert Schumann, who was the most famous composer of the time, and announced himself, said, I would like to play some of the works for you. And Robert Schumann and his wife, Clara Schumann, were so moved and touched by the talent and genius of this young man, Robert immediately went and wrote article proclaiming him the new genius, the new messiah of music, which for Brahms was both great luck but also a curse because now he had to live up to the challenge. You know, that he was the great 19th century composer. And he struggled with that all his life, successful, but still a struggle. So we are going to spend this whole week playing music by Brahms and his friends, Schumann, Clara Schumann, and uh, also talking about his century, time that he lived. So today, you'll hear some of his piano music. Tomorrow, we are going to do his string sextet, which is a small symphony but also talk about science during Brahms' time, which culminated with Freud and Einstein in the beginning of the 20th century. On Thursday, we're actually going to show you that Brahms was not only a serious composer, but also had a great deal of fun, but I think a lot of dances, but Hungarian dances, waltzes. He was very close friend of, Gost of Strauss, Johann Strauss, who was, of course, the king of the waltzes. And also uh, Dvořák, Czech composer of Slavonic dances. So we're going to talk about dances, and we were going to, in the ballroom, we're going to invite the new audience to join us in dancing the waltz, to the music of Strauss. And on Friday, we're going uh, to be a, a dramatic reading of the letters of Brahms and Clara Schumann, mingled with the music that was written 
for Clara Schumann, for Robert Schumann. So that's, that's going to be our book. So today, besides the two movements of the violin piece and a wonderful song, the Brahms was also a great composer of songs. He worked with women, very famous women choir. All his life was a lot of songs. So we're going to show all, all the aspects of his life. But today we're going to concentrate. Uh, Brahms made his living as a solo pianist. You know, he, he played concerts. And he usually played his own works. So he wrote works that he liked for himself to show what he could do on piano. And we have three young ladies today who are going to each play a piece by Brahms to demonstrate Brahms uh, masterpieces. And then Ken Bohan is going to sing a beautiful song and we'll finish again with the last movement of the Bible.